Hey guys, Relay from Team 8 here. Uh, today we're going to be giving an honest review of Cyberpunk 2077. Now, Cyberpunk 2077 has had uh, several patches since this release, which admittedly was a rather buggy release. And for those who play on last gen consoles, like PS4 or whatever the Xbox alternative is, uh, they simply kind of botched the game for that, uh, for those two consoles. Uh, truthfully, it, it underperforms in almost every aspect, and I suppose it wasn't even ready to be released on those two devices in particular. Now, on PS5 and the new Xbox as well, it does run a bit better, but there are still quite a few bugs. By far, the cleanest version to get, or the cleanest platform to be playing on currently, is PC, which is what I'm playing on currently. I am playing Cyberpunk 2077 on GOG, through GOG I should say, uh, which admittedly does still have some bugs, but I want to give an overlook at the entire game. We already know all about the bugs and the glitches, but being that I've played over 45 hours, more towards 50 hours now, I can solidly say that I can give a decent review on the game, as opposed to the people who've only played for maybe 4 hours or 8 hours, and uh, thought it wasn't worth the time to give it an honest review. So I'm going to get the bad stuff out of the way, the cons first, and then we'll work our way towards the pros. So first cons, no surprise here, bugs and glitches. To me, they're not really an issue. Um, on PC, I have yet to find a game-breaking glitch or a bug which physically prevents you from progressing in the actual story or the campaign of Cyberpunk 2077. Now, there is one side quest where I got set back and I had to reload because there was a glitch and it's um, with a side character called Rivers who becomes one of your friends later on in the game. And um, it's a... Uh, without spoiling too much, it's basically a side quest where you have to infiltrate a club and there's a set of doors leading to the club that can't open. Now for whatever reason, whatever causes to occur, I think it's like a skipped bit of dialogue at some point, but all you have to do is reload an earlier save, which if you're like me and you save frequently enough, that's not an issue. You reload an earlier save, you redo a couple parts of the quest and it'll end up working. Now, aside from that, one quest, the one side quest, I've not had anything that I would consider game breaking. They're mostly just very funny little bug bugs and glitches with the graphical errors, primarily. Um, but other than that, like we've got, um, for example, I'll include a couple of clips. Johnny Silverhand's infamous flying dart is just levitating in the air, and I found that kind of funny. And some like crazy stuff like, um, you know, I'd be playing and I use a katana. I use melee weapons primarily, and I'd lob off the head of an enemy, but the the enemy is still standing for whatever reason. <laughs> um, or you know, you'd be driving and another driver would hit you, and you'd have a collision with the wall. Whereas you'd collide with the wall and you'd get stuck inside the wall, like collision issues. But those aren't really big deals. Like, they're nothing that will actually physically stop you from progressing the game. And those are the only real glitches that I've noticed that really aren't that much of a bad thing. They're more of just a, a shitty little, I don't know, down downside to the game, which doesn't really affect the actual gameplay. It's not often enough that you get these that'll actually bother you. Um, so, the bugs and glitches to summarize, aren't very pertinent. And if they are, they're nothing that's too crazy, at least not on my, my PC version for GOG. Now, moving on, um, performance issues have been noted with people who have Ryzen 6 core processors. Uh, for whatever reason, there are values that you can edit uh, to make it better, but what's happening is that out of the six core processors, only six threads are being used 
and that reduces the amount of CPU usage in general and in turn reduces the performance that you have in that game. I have a little fix for that at the end of the video if you're interested in taking a look at it, which basically just lets you use all 12 threads and it's a very quick um, editing of a couple of values in the exe file that will allow you to do that and it should net you maybe, uh, I don't know, 5 to 10 FPS gain, which is pretty solid. Uh, but other than that, performance wise, I've been running the game on high for pretty much everything high slash ultra. And I've got, to give you an idea of my setup, I've got a 1070 Ti, uh, 16 gigs of DDR4 at 3000 megahertz. And I've got a Ryzen 5 2600. So nothing too crazy, more mid spec if anything. And I've been running it roughly between 40 to 60 FPS, which admittedly isn't awesome on 1080p considering, but I don't mind. I don't find it's choppy, so it's fairly smooth for me and it doesn't bother me that much, so I've been able to enjoy the game quite well. Now, the next thing I want to move on to, we've got... Um, originally, I was led to believe at the beginning of the game, or at least during the trailer, when they were showing off all the different um, factions or tribes like the Voodoo Boys, for example, or the Animals, or uh, Sixth Street Gang, or the Valentinos. I was under the impression that you'd be able to join like a faction or, or a tribe, which is pretty cool. It's a nice feeling when you're, when you're included in like a different... Uh, for example, when you're in, I don't know, you're playing Elder Scrolls and you're in the Fighters Guild or the Mages Guild or Thieves Guild or whatever. I thought it was going to be something like that like where you'd be actually be able to join the gangs and take part in like activities with the gangs which you kind of do on side quests but it's not really like you're a part of a faction um, you don't really feel that inclusion into uh, one of those groups which would have been a cool thing to add I feel like it would have been a nice little um, I, don't, I wouldn't say necessarily an improvement but as a bit more uh, flavor to the game like a little bit more of an inclusion factor if that makes sense and um, that's where I thought or at least that's what I thought um, would have been included in the game like you'd be able to join different factions and uh, those factions would kind of change the way or the direction that the game took I thought it might have it might have done a bit of a difference um, in terms of inclusivity now Moving on to uh, skill-based dialogue stuff. So unlike in Fallout where uh, oftentimes your dialogue can kind of tie into your skill set depending on how much you have invested into whatever skill set, um, Cyberpunk kind of does that. Like you have additional options if you invest so much into, for example, your technical skill or your intelligence or your, your strength skill or your whatever other skill but the problem with that is 90% of the time these skill based dialogue options don't lead you to a different outcome in your conversation like they'll just be a useless add-on you don't gain any extra XP you don't uh, persuade them to do something else sometimes you will but that's that rare 10% of dialogue that may or may not be present and usually isn't present in most conversations that you have with NPCs so that leads me to believe that, I mean, they could have done a little bit more with the actual uh, dialogue portion when it ties into skills, because oftentimes you're just clicking on a useless additive of information, like flexing false knowledge because you don't really get to apply it in the dialogue. But um, again, I would have liked to see it implemented a bit better. Uh, that way it actually would have changed the course of how the conversation goes and in turn how the rest of the quest would play out. Now another thing about the con, without going too much into detail for those of you who haven't uh, bought the game yet, there's a main character that's a good friend of V who is uh, your character that you play as, V. The name is Jackie Wells and at the very beginning of the game you play a few quests with Jackie Wells and then getting into Night City, which is where the rest of the game really takes place in, 
it's fast forwarded through like multiple weeks or a month or a few months of of gameplay with you and Jackie Wells like building um, like a friendship with that character building a relationship with that character and it just fast forwards through to a point where it um, something bad happens and then you don't really have as much of a connection with that character as you probably should have I feel like it was rushed I feel like there could have been a bit more of, of character building between those two because he continues to have a bit of an, of an impact um, later on in the game like they still mention him uh, Jackie Wells often enough later on in the game and it ties into a couple other character interactions so I feel like they could have at least let you play a few more missions with Jackie Wells as opposed to um, having it as as an abrupt end all of a sudden um, after you know only playing two missions with them even though you had like a few months to spend with the guy I feel like they could have done a, a little bit more uh, quest wise with Jackie Wells prior to uh, ending the storyline with them now for the cons those are primarily the few things that I wanted to pick at I want to make sure that it's known that I'm not going to be 100% vouching for this game. Uh, you know, I'm not going to be those guys that are like, oh yeah, we've been waiting for so many years, we want our pre-order to be validated. Uh, I want to give the most honest review I can about this game. So I've listed off quite a few cons there. Uh, again, this is for the PC version, so the console version doesn't really apply I can't speak for them I know it's horrible especially for the last gen the condition of the game is horrible uh, so PS4 and the other the Xbox variant um, they kinda got shafted on it but that's alright we've got the PC version here so pros wise the game itself despite some of its graphical glitches are like it, it, it's immaculate the, the, the textures and everything they're beautiful I'm running it on high low end ultra I don't have any ray tracing enabled because like I said I'm running a GTX 1070 Ti but you can still see beautiful crisp clean reflections at night the city comes alive look there's neon neon signs everywhere and the lighting the particles everything looks beautiful like this game is very very beautiful their attention to detail was incredible even some of the characters like um, we've had body mods which in this game is, is quite common you can modify your body you get what they're called I guess they're called cyber mods I should call them anywho her characters get their body modified to look like plastic or latex you can see the sheen like the, the shine on the plastic or the the rubbery material very well like it's incredible the lights the lighting effects the particles the attention to detail inside of the vehicle you have all the buttons the shifters like wow like it's really really beautiful they made it a beautiful game second thing I wanted to point out uh, is that the campaign is incredible the narratives have been very well written the characters that you meet um, are quite memorable and it's not like very generic chat options uh, with the NPCs that actually have a significance they actually have like a personality behind them it's not it's not bland um, at least I don't feel it's bland and I feel like the campaign giving you a few options at the end to have a different ending to your campaign was an ideal way to go uh, of course with RPGs that should be the way to go but I'm just pointing out that they did awesome there uh, with the several different endings that you can have based on um, who you've met and helped out on side quests and even your few main quests and they give you kind of options as to which path you'd like to take at the end and uh, the outcomes are based on which choice you made at the very end which was a nice addition now, another thing I'd like to talk about as far as pros go would be the enjoyable side quests. There are um, quite a few repetitive things, so uh, the assaults around the city, all that stuff, the assaults and the, um, the little, I don't know what you call them, encounters, 
you can call them. Those are made to be more or less repetitive. They're just stuff you find around the city to, uh, I don't know, to, to play around with and uh, spend a bit of time. But the side quests, some of them were, were a nice break from the serious tone of the game. So, for example, at some point in the game you're going to meet uh, an AI-controlled cab uh, called Delamain. And in one quest, th this Delamain AI has a virus which splits his personality. So he, he gets split, all of his personalities get split out, and each one of them are controlling a cab. And, you know, you'll drive up to one of the cabs and you're trying to uh, get him back to the, the main HQ. And it's going to be like the depressive emotion. And he's depressive and he doesn't want to come in. Or you get to another cab and it's going to be like the, uh, the frustrated one, the anger. And he's all pissed off. And um, so, uh, you know, that made me smile a little bit, made me laugh. It was kind of a funny uh, variant of the serious tone of the game. And um, I thought it was well done. I thought it was really well done. And there are a few quests like that which are kind of a nice break. And um, they're not bland, which is what I like about it. Now, moving on, there is incredible character detail, as mentioned before, beautiful scenery and environment, but the character detail as well, especially the NPCs, you know, that actually have relevance. Everything is, is like, the textures are beautiful, uh, the attention to detail is incredible. I was informed of uh, how you character detail. I, <laughs> now, this is not related to actually customizing your character but I mean the in-game characters that are already in place like the NPCs and stuff have incredible detail to them. Um, customization wise I wouldn't have minded having a few more details. Uh, the, <laughs> the generals bit was a funny add-on admittedly but um, I think they could have done a bit more like you could have customized your voice. I get that it's a role-playing game and because of the voice actors having to act it out. There'd have to be several different voice actors for that. But I feel like an addition of another, a few selections of voice could have been awesome. Uh, other than that, I have no nitpicking with the uh, character customization. Suspected organized crime activity reported off now, street. APB out on one Shinobu the next Kuma. bit is quite important, balance-wise, for the game. I found that they had good sti skill trees in the sense that none of them were overpowered. None of them allowed them... Like, I played on hard, and I still found it uh, kind of hard, uh, especially beginning off, because I found it was difficult to progress because the enemies would kill me in one or two shots with a gun. And even now, towards the end of the game where I'm like level 35, I still get killed in about 3-4 shots uh, with whatever gun the enemy is using. And at most, like, that's not sugarcoating it. So the skill tree kind of makes your gameplay easier and makes it funner. There's more options, like for example, you might notice that I use quick hacking a lot. And I enjoy that. The quick hacking enables me to uh, get into, kind of uh, exploit some enemy weaknesses which uh, allow me in turn to uh, take advantage and be able to uh, damage them further or have them fight against each other or blind them then go in for a stealth option. Uh, but none of the skill trees are really overpowered in that sense. Like there will be some enemies that I can't do anything on because they're not quick hackable. Uh, therefore I'd have to go in at a different approach and there's nice little nice little uh, twist like that that will make it so it, it's balanced and you're not uh, on top of the world with your your uh, levels and your skill trees uh, the lastly the last thing I want to get to is um, that there's always something to do uh, that said you might find it repetitive, but a lot of gigs are kind of funny. Um, sometimes, uh, instead of doing just regular assaults, I'll go do some different gigs, which are kind of like side quests, but side quests that don't have any effect on the story. And these gigs are also quite interesting as well, and um, they 
reduce the the bland the blandness and the repetitiveness of doing just basic side quests or basic assaults and uh, things like that so um, in summary I think Cyberpunk 2077 is an excellent game uh, but admittedly does have quite a few cons to it uh, quite a few bugs and glitches even on the PC version but nothing that should uh, impede you from making progress on the game um, for those of you who have if you do have issues that impede you from making progress on the game on PC uh, give me a shout in the comments and uh, I'll do my best to try and uh, figure that out hopefully I can I can help you out with it and um, uh, for those of you who play the console unfortunately I'm sorry I, uh, I have no experience of playing this game on the console as I mentioned I solely got it on GOG um, which makes it so that 100% of the proceeds go to CG Project Red and um, you know, for you guys, you guys kind of got shafted in the deal. I apologize, especially PS4 and uh, last gen Xbox users. Uh, but overall, I enjoyed the game very, very much in the campaign, especially. I thought it was very well written, and the narrative behind everything was very well done. That said, feel free to comment like subscribe and for those of you who would like to know about the Ryzen fix if you find your CPU is kind of not getting its full utility uh, stay tuned for another maybe two minutes or so two three minutes or so and uh, I'll get you that fix and I'll show you how to fix that and hopefully have your CPU at least giving you uh, 10 more frames which might be just what you need to play the rest of the game. That said for those of you who don't want to know about the fix, take her easy. So for those of you who stuck around for the Ryzen CPU usage fix, so what Bramble XT on Reddit has found, um, he's found a little bit of a improvement that can be made for the Ryzen 6 core 12 thread processors. So for example, I have a Ryzen 5 2600, so this would apply for me. So, originally, the game would only really use 50% of all your threads, which is kind of setting you back a little bit. Uh, so, a fix has been found for that on the user's end, which you can pretty much do. It's fairly straightforward. Um, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to head over to this site here, which I'll include the link in the description. And we're going to download HXD Editor. Once you download it, install it, and then I'll have you run it as well. So secondly, you're going to want to find the path of your executable file for Cyberpunk. For me, it's going to be in GOG. So I'm going to head over there now. There we go. So prior to making any modification, what I want you to do off the bat here is I just want you to copy and paste the executable onto your desktop. That way you have a backup if ever something were to happen for the application. Now, it's pretty straightforward, so I don't expect there to be any issues with it but in the event that there would be an issue for it, at least you have a backup like what I have right here. So now what we'll do is we'll open up HXD if you haven't already opened it and we'll drag and drop. I'm drag and dropping my backup because I've already edited my original. So I'll pretend this is my original. We'll drag and drop that Cyberpunk 2077 executable. So it would be the one in the actual path file right here. So your, uh, wherever you have it in your folder, either Steam or GOG, you drag and drop that guy into there. And you'd go Control Find, go to Hex Values, and this nice little string of numbers here, Control Copy that, Control Paste it, I'll include it in the description as well. But um, it'll also be on the screen for you here. Okay, so now it'll search for that, it'll find that 
that uh, those values. Now that we found those values, the only thing we're going to want to edit here is the 75. So you'll highlight 75 and you'll type E B. Now the chain will be shown in bright red and once that's done you'll just go save, exit out, and your game should now be using more of your processor and more than just six threads of your Ryzen CPU. So hopefully this helped for you. If it did, um, or didn't for that matter, uh, please be sure to leave a comment and let me know what you think. Till next time, take her easy.